This is Rich Marshall with God at Work. So glad to have you with us today. You know, I want to take you back to a scripture. I think it was the first scripture that I ever preached from. I, I started pastoring a church back when I was 19 years old in the farm country of Nebraska. And I, I didn't really know how to preach. I wasn't very good at it. But I knew this. I knew that Romans 1.16 had power in it. So it's the first scripture I ever preached. Listen to it and receive from it even today. It says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God to salvation for everyone who believes, for the Jew first and also for the Greek. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. That's what I wanted to start my ministry with. I preached for a number of years and more recently have moved into ministering to business people and speaking to you about how God can use you at work. But this scripture verse is powerful and still powerful in your life. If you will receive it and believe it today, my guest and I, Marquetta Breslin, are going to talk about how the gospel is so powerful. It's being used, the gospel in her life, she's being used of God to touch people in many ways, not in the uh, normal way that we would expect, but God is using her greatly. You're going to enjoy this time. I'll be back in just a moment with Marquetta Breslin. Want to make a difference in your place of work, but not sure where to start? God wants to work powerfully in your life, no matter what job you're doing, paid or unpaid. Bringing Revival to Your Workplace, written by Rich Marshall, the host of God at Work, provides unique spiritual insights that will equip you to live out your God-given call to the marketplace. Download this free practical guide and believe God for a spark of revival in your life today. Welcome back to God at Work. I'm so glad I have Marquetta Breslin with me today. This young lady I met recently, we've been able to minister together. God is using her in tremendous ways. Marquetta, so glad to have you with us. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for having me. You know, uh, just having you is an honor uh, because God has been working in your life just in the last few years in powerful, powerful ways. And uh, so I was hearing about you from a couple of my friends, <laughs> and then I got to meet you, and now we've done a couple of things together. Yes. And I, I suspect that in the future we may do some more things together <laughs> uh, because God is just wanting to do something. So, Marquetta, tell us a little bit about you and what it is that you do. So my name is Marquetta Breslin. I am a licensed cosmetologist, and I equip beauty professionals about how to build their business in the beauty industry because that part isn't taught. But the icing on the cake about what I do is that I teach them how to do it with God first. Yes. And not just all about the business because we don't have a business without putting God first. It's not going to last long. So I bring beauty professionals in from all over the world um, to a live event or either I'll train them online through my online training. And when they come to that live event, they think they're coming for business training, but yeah. they're leaving there with so much more. Oh, they're leaving there with God in their heart, aren't yes, they? God yes, God in their hearts. And it's, it's just really incredible how God has moved and shifted our ministry because our business is our ministry yes. over the past you know over the past years it's been truly amazing so tell us how this started did it start as a uh, a kingdom mindset or did that god kind of infiltrate your mind on that <laughs> it did not it actually started as just something that we wanted to do um, back in 2003 we started okay. my husband had the bright idea after we got married he said uh, we should start a business. So the day we got married, we started BraidsByBreslin.com, which Braids was, by Breslin, I okay. was a hair braider. And so we started that website first. He said, I think you should teach people how to braid hair. And I said, no, we're in the Air Force. I want to retire. I really don't want to do that. He said, no, I think you should. So I finally said yes, just to, you know, thinking he would just forget about it, but he didn't. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> about three days later, he had a film producer sitting in our living room in our 600 square foot apartment in Hampton, Virginia, and we filmed our first training DVD. Okay. And um, from there, it grew tremendously. We just, we, I began to teach other techniques, and I realized, you know, hindsight is 2020. I realized God had given me the ability to take a complex technique 
and break it down so I could teach it to anybody. And so that's how I was able to uh, teach people these difficult, some of these difficult things in the beauty industry, like braiding hair, doing these intricate twists and all of that kind of stuff. I started way back in 2003 and then from there it kind of grew and then in 2006 when my mom got diagnosed with breast cancer that's when god first said to me now i want you to teach this to other people because it's going to help them get out of poverty get break barriers in the industry and so i said huh this is pretty interesting yes i think i should do this and so it was at that moment that i decided that I needed to put God, we needed to put God in our business, and, and we, we did. And we listened, and we were obedient. Uh, well, I, I, folks, I've seen her business in action. I don't just mean on, on YouTube videos, although you, you can find Marquette a lot of places. <laughs> but but I, I've been there live at an event, mm -hmm. and uh, I, I was so blessed to be able to be with you. But to watch, uh, the first time I was there, I walked in late. Uh, it was about time for lunch. And as you close the meeting, and by the way, your, your slides are, hey, your business is your ministry. And it, it, it looked like I was walking into a marketplace ministry setting <laughs> as you're teaching these cosmetologists, hairstylists, how to, how to do their business, giving them good principles, but putting God in it as well. But then I watched them come to you as mm. you stood there and they started saying, thank you. And they were weeping mm -hmm. and they were thanking you and laying their head on your shoulder, how, how their lives have been changed. And so for 10 or 15, 20 minutes, actually, I don't think you got lunch that day because they started coming. You closed <laughs> at 12. We're starting to get at one. And, and you had an hour long line and you didn't leave them. You just let them all come and loved on them. I saw God in you at that day. Thank you. I think it's so important because in our industry, there's not enough love. It's just, mm. you have, it's a lot of superficial stuff. Yes. And um, I always say as hairstylists and barbers and nail techs, our hands are anointed, a yes. lot of us. And we have the ability to do something that, in my opinion, no one else has the ability to do. And that is change people's perception about how they feel about themselves through working with of our course. hands. Yes. And I think it's incredible. But a lot of stylists don't value that part of what we do because... Mm -hmm. It could be that they've been hurt, they've been church hurt before or whatever it is. So yep. they don't truly understand that your chair, that chair is a ministry. It is there for that. It is there for you to minister to that individual sitting in your chair, for you to intercede for them, for you to sow into that individual. And they just don't get it. So a lot of times they feel this pent up oh my gosh, I got this burning desire to get this out and I, I don't know how I'm going to do that. And so that event gives them permission right. to go out and, and do that. It's, mm. it's almost like all the, the walls come down and things are broken and now they have the confidence to go out and sew into their, their chair, their ministry, yeah. their into clients. Their, into their chair. Uh, yes. You know, when, when you asked me to come and mm -hmm. uh, gave me a few minutes to speak to these, uh, these beautiful women, most of them women, there were a handful of men there mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. But when I started thinking, so what am I going to say? Because uh, for years <laughs> I'm used to preaching in a church, and then for years I've been talking to business people, your business is your ministry. And the first thought that came to my mind is what you just said. When, when we feel good about ourselves, the way we look, we feel better about life. Right. And so you, you've connected that together the same way I did. I guess that you would say, yeah, Rich, it's not a hard connection to make. But, <laughs> uh, but I did make the connection uh, so, so that I was able to minister to those ladies and watch you minister to them. And uh, t tell us, because you, you started talking about, without getting there, about the wigs that you got from, was it your mother or your grandmother? That, My mom. So from your mom. T tell us how that came about. It's just an uh, interesting story. Okay. So in 2006, my mom was diagnosed with stage two breast cancer. Um, I had already been toying around with um, trying to figure out how they made wigs in the film industry. And I taught myself how to ventilate. Now, ventilate is how you actually tie the hair on to what we call lace, it's okay. different types of lace. So I taught myself how to do that, but I, I didn't really do anything with it at that moment. And then um, my mom, I'll never forget, she was in South Carolina. We were stationed there. We were still active duty Air Force doing this and running the business. And she went to rub the back of her head. 
and a handful of hair came out from oh. the chemotherapy. And it broke my heart. Mm. She didn't. She just said, I'm just happy to be alive. Okay. So she ended up losing every bit of her hair. And I said, well, Mom, can you please let me just make you a wig? Because the wigs she was wearing were unflattering. So I said, <laughs> let me make you a wig, and let's see how you like it, and let's just go from there. She fell in love with it. It was like I had my mom back again. Oh. Even though she had been going through so much, and she was still happy to be alive, just to have something as simple as a wig mm. just changed the way she felt inside. And that helped, I believe, it helped her heal quicker yes. during that time. So after I did that for mom, I was in prayer, and God said, now I want you to teach other people how to do this. But it was deeper than what I thought. I only imagined doing it the way he had showed me to do it before through the DVDs, through okay. training, online right. training or DVDs. But he said, no, I want you to teach hands-on classes. And I went, whoa, mm -hmm. <laughs> because I had never taught a hands-on class before. And the first one I did, you would have never known. He was there guiding me through each yes. and every step. I got some OJT training and no one knew. <laughs> right. And from thank there. Thank you, God, how he covers us. Yes, this. thank you, God. And from there, that was when I started doing live events. But I realized later on that he was equipping me to do what I do now, years later. And that is um, when people come in, they come in and they learn a skill, but they get so much more. They get the inspiration. They get the God part of it. They get all of that. Mm. So they think they're coming for one thing, but they get so much more. Yeah, so much more. So, so folks, let me just give you a little picture here, and I, and I can't capture it all, but I've seen it. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to try to help to paint this picture because uh, Marquetta had uh, what, two or 300 people there. I don't know. Uh, about 200. 200 people at, at this event. It was in Las Vegas, so it was at a conference room in a casino. <laughs> and uh, she had them there and was teaching them. And then gets the end of the afternoon. She says, now my next speaker is, uh, is Rich Marshall. Mm -hmm. So I come up there, and, uh, and I don't know, I can't remember how I was introduced, but they were, they were happy to see me. Yes. And, uh, and I'm, I'm up there, and I'm used to preaching in churches or doing a Christian business conference. So as I'm going along, I said, uh, let's open our Bibles to, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> <laughs> and, and they started pulling their Bibles out. Uh, yeah, yes. I've got one. I've got one. They I've got did. one. So I said, oh, so the, many of these ladies <laughs> knew what was coming, but others did not. But so I shared a little scripture about the, how the anointing of the Lord is there and is your anointing and you can have it. And, mm -hmm. and I ministered to the group. And uh, then Marquetta said, now come back tonight and we're going to pray for you. So at that point, uh, Marquetta has spoken most of the day. I shared for a while. And then Melvin Pillay, our other friend who's been a guest here. Yes. Uh, and, and we met. To, I met you and Melvin uh, and Ed Rush <laughs> all at the same time. So, uh, so then Melvin comes. He speaks for a while. And then Marquetta says, now we're going to pray for you. And the last time we did this, Melvin and I prayed together. It took too long. So <laughs> tonight, get in line. Rich will have a group. I'll have a group. So when you get to the front, you go to, to Melvin or me or Rich. Uh -huh. It still took us from 7.30 to 11.30 that night. We prayed for four hours. We did. It was the most awesome time. Oh, it was amazing. Now, that didn't start until I started having the Million Dollar Stylist Live events. That was number nine. And I usually have, twi have them twice a year. And God would show up. And he would just move throughout the room. He would have me. I'm always very, very, very obedient during these events because mm -hmm. I want to make sure that the people who come, because they come from all, literally all over the world. Right. There were, there were ladies there from London, I know. Yes. Yeah. And I want to make sure that if you're there, I'm giving you everything God wants you to have. So this particular um, event a uh, couple years ago, maybe about two or three years ago, he said, I just want you to ask one question. He said, you gave them homework for them to write down their vision. I just want you to ask the question and pass the microphone. He said, I'll tell you the first two people to pass it to, and then I'll take it from there. So I went, this is weird, okay. but I'm going to listen. Yes. And he showed up and he began to, to, to start delivering people just from what they were confessing and saying out of their really? mouths. Yes. And so this started happening at every event. 
And so finally, Ricky said, well, why don't you just pray for people at the end of the event? Why don't you just do that so you can still teach and they can still say what they need to say and get what they need to get and just pray for people? I said, huh. That's such a brilliant idea. Yeah. So Ricky is your husband. Yes, Ricky's who, my husband. Who, who is an excellent cook, by the way. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Ricky. <laughs> <laughs> he is a phenomenal cook. Yes, phenomenal. <laughs> so he said, why don't you pray? Yes. And so you did. I did. And at first it was smaller groups. And then the by the third time I had, um, I don't even remember how many. I remember Melvin and I ending up outside at the same casino mm. in 100 degree weather that night until oh about 10 or 11 o'clock, still praying for people. Wow. So this particular time when I was there, they did kick us out of the room. <laughs> they did. But they didn't put us outside. No. <laughs> Instead, we, we had prayer lines amongst the, <laughs> the slot machines. Amongst the slot machines. <laughs> it, it was like a dream come true it for was. a guy like me <laughs> that walks in there. Uh, uh, these people all need prayer, and I can't imagine what they were thinking. Oh, me but, either. <laughs> but we came out, and so I had my line, or that we had one line, and they go to one of the three of us, uh -huh. and, and we prayed another hour and a half we did. amongst the slot machines. And so people were watching this, knowing what's going on. <laughs> I don't know. I think everybody I prayed for was in your group. But they might have come out of the, I don't know if they came from the slot machines and <laughs> got in line or not. Some of them did. And last, last time, some of them did. Some of them did. They came from the slot machines and came right in. And, and we prayed for them we as well. We prayed for them as well. Oh, my. And so, it's amazing. Uh, so as I was praying, I, my question was, uh, you know, how's, how's your faith level? Well, you know, when I came here, it was nothing, and I didn't expect this. But so I, I ended up asking the people what they needed and ended up leading people to Jesus. So we had Amen. a prayer line that was resulting in salvations Hallelujah. in the casino in Los Gatos at a, <laughs> at a convention for hairdressers. <laughs> I mean, uh, it, it's, so, it, it, it's so in sync with what God has been showing me would happen, but it's so out of sync with what I've been seeing mm -hmm. that it just left me uh, stunned by the goodness of God. And so I want to say thank you, Marquetta, because you've been faithful. You've been doing what God called you to do. You've stepped out of the box and got into unusual activity <laughs> for the kingdom. And, and you're doing a great job with it. Thank you so, so much. So, so what's coming next? What, what's on the future for you? Well, so the future is one day events. So I'm taking my Lace Week seminar. I'm condensing it down to a one day boot camp. And I'm going around the United States uh, and teaching, okay. but it's not just about the lace wig boot camp. It's about prayer afterwards. Yes. So the, the Lord showed me that he's moving me strategically into these different cities just to step in so that I can pray for some of these women because some of them, they don't have a relationship with God and they don't right. understand. Um, they don't have anyone to show them how to do it without having to, um, go to church all the time right. or whatever, because a lot of them don't go because they've been church hurt. Yes, yeah. And um, it just breaks my heart to see that. And they think that that's the only way. And God is using me to show them that, hey, there's another way that you can develop a relationship with God and he will lead you to the perfect church that you're supposed to be at. So that's what those events are about. They're about um, teaching them a skill, but also giving them a little Giving bit them Jesus. the anointing. Yes. We get, teach them a skill, give them the anointing, get Jesus in their heart. Yes. And uh, we could almost say here, coming to a city near you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so you're going to travel throughout the U.S., you said. I am, yes. Uh, is there a way that we find out where these are? Is it Absolutely. You can go to MarquettaBreslin.com and all of the information will be right there on the site where all the cities I'm going to this year. I actually have the whole rest of the year planned out already with all the different Already cities. all set. Yes. One day seminars. Yes. And how much are you going to travel, Marquetta? Uh, quite a bit. Quite a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Once a month. Um, the end of this month, I'll be in Dallas. Okay. Uh, then I go to Philadelphia. Uh, after that, I go to back here to Orlando. I'm okay. excited. And then Raleigh, North Carolina. Then I have another two-day event in Vegas. Um, and then after that, I have two five-day events. I actually have three five-day events this year. Those five-day events are incredible. Um, I have a 90-day mentorship program. And in that program, they go through 45 videos and 45 PDF documents that 
teach them how to build their business. Mm. But what I also give them is biblical scripture for each of those days, and they get a business Bible from me as well. Oh. So they're building their business God's way, exactly how Ricky and I oh, did it. Oh, my, my, my. And then at the end, they come to Las Vegas for five days where they get true prayer and deliverance, and they get to build their business, continue building their business there as well. Folks, if you're listening to this, you're, you're hearing what God is doing in the world today, and it's different. He still loves us, of course. He still loves his local church. But Marquette is touching people who aren't going to church or maybe are not getting exactly what they need because she's able to not only train them in the skills that they need. They learned how to do hair. They didn't learn how to run their business. Marquette is teaching them that. And then not as an add-on, but as the central theme, God is at the center of this thing. It doesn't just happen when she says at the end of the day, oh, by the way, we'll pray. (laughs) <laughs> because it's been in there all day long, and they know it. Yes. They've come to expect it from you, and, but they know how valuable your training is. So you're reaching people that otherwise wouldn't come to a church, wouldn't come to a spiritual event, but they're wanting to receive it from you. From the, from the kingdom of God and from the marketplace ministry movement, thank you, Marquetta. You're, oh, doing, you so what, you're doing what God called you to do. And, and I hope it's an inspiration to some of you that you can use your ministry as a tool to touch those that you are going to minister to. And, and, and it's not offensive when you're just sharing from your heart. It's not a judgmental thing. You need to do this. You, it's just a loving thing. Mm-hmm. You said a minute ago, a lot of people are not getting love. That has been a theme over the last several weeks as I've been talking to business mm-hmm. leaders. If I just love them, it ministers to them. There's not enough love in my company. I've learned the most important thing I do is love them. Mm -hmm. So it's a theme that's coming, and it's a simple one, folks. You can love. You can love. You can do it where you are. So Marquetta, I know that you're a woman of prayer, a woman who hears, hears the Lord. There's some people that need to hear from you right now in a prayer tone. I want you to just look in the camera right there. Pray right now that God would give breakthrough in these lives. Amen. Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this moment right now, and I thank you for each individual that's watching this right now. Father, I ask that you just reveal to them your plan over your over their lives and that you order their steps in the direction that they need to go in, Lord. I pray that you love on them, Lord, thank and you. I pray that you send people in their lives to minister to them and to guide them along the way. And Father, I pray that you expose Satan's plan over their lives so they understand what is you and what is not of you. So, Father, I decree and declare these things done in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. (laughs) Amen. Thank you, Marquetta. It's been a pleasure to have you here. Folks, I hope that you have just received from the Lord today, not just what Marquetta was saying, but what God is putting in your heart as a result of it. She's taken what looked like a conference business, a training business, and turned it into a powerful ministry event. Nobody's offended. Nobody's turned off. God is working, and he's working through you, young lady, and he wants to work through your life. Remember it. God is wanting to use you in your workplace. God bless you. I'll be back with some closing remarks in just a moment. God bless you, and thank you, Marquetta. Thank you very much.